on Wednesday. But every day, every time, we will study and get closer to you. Bless your children that have gathered wherever that they are to listen to the Bible study. And those who are unable, don't have a way for them. Make a way for them that the next Wednesday they will be with us. As we prepare ourselves for the Bible study, open the words for us. Open the doors for us. We thank you for the opportunity. We thank you. We bless you. Father, we thank you. In Jesus, my name is tonight. With Thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Good night. I mean, good evening, everyone. Pastor Lambo, I hand over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Elder Oben, for this powerful prayer. May God bless you. We live in church. Thank you. Uh, welcome back again to our Wednesday Bible study class. And to tonight we are going to study together another very important uh, epistle of Apostle Peter to the uh, Jewish Christian believers. Uh, that was scattered all over um, the Asia Minor. And uh, the important thing for tonight's study is that everything that Apostle uh, Peter wrote are uh, exactly what is happening in the church today. And, and it, it, it's a pointer to how we can see ourselves either as a a benchwoman Christian or a born again Christian. What is our relationship with God? How do we relate with God? How are we in the church? So people have been in church for 30 years. They cannot be regarded as, uh, as a, a chosen vessel of God. And yet there are some people, they just come to the church. They measure up to expectations. So we're going to study this thing, um, and I, I want all of us to participate, you know, positively tonight. Uh, <clears throat> just let me pray. Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, once again for bringing us together tonight, O oh Lord, to study your word. I beseech thee, Father Almighty, to please anoint the message that you have given to us tonight, O oh Lord. Father, please consecrate our hearts, O oh Lord, open our hearts to be able to discern what you have sent to us, O Lord. We beg you, O Lord, Father Almighty, never to let us be here as alone, but do us of thy word. Speak through me, O Lord. And at the end of this message, O Lord, let each and every one of us be blessed. And thank you for everything you've done for us. He started the chapter 2 of... Um, I mean, <clears throat> chapter 2 of that uh, uh, first Peter, he said, therefore, in, in, because we, we have uh, several versions of the Bible, but uh, reading from the uh, New King James Version, it, it started with, therefore, therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire the pure make of the world, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Now, because this is a King's, uh, 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 King's English, um, we, we're going to try to uh, break it down to our modern day English that may be uh, able to understand better what Apostle Peter was writing here. So, so, reading from New Living Translation, it said, Therefore, or so, get rid, get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, with all hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Verse 2, like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment, now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. Then in verse 4, which we will uh, 
later gets into. He said, you are coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. And you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What's more, you are his holy priest. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. As the scriptures say, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honor, and anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Verse 7 Yes, you who trust him recognize the honor God has given him. But for those who reject him, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And it is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not obey God's word, and so they meet the fate that was planned for them. Verse 9, But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for He called you out of the darkness into His wonderful light. So in that verse 9, it gives us the impression that Apostle Peter was definitely writing to some a particular race of people. And it's just not writing to all men. It's not writing to all. It's, the letter is not just for any, 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 any. I mean, for international consumption. So, so why Apostle, why Apostle Peter now says, therefore, in other words, he, he has been building his argument right from from what we have just finished last uh, Wednesday from uh, from from chapter one, uh, especially you know uh, the, the last. Uh, three, three verses of chapter 1, which is verses 22 to 25. It says the enduring power, and the, that is the enduring word. He said because in, in that verse 22, it said, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flowers fall away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. If you remember again, especially these last verses, it's something that we, we've also read in the book of Psalm, that, 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 uh, that um, uh, especially in, in Psalm, in, in Psalm uh, uh, 90, that our days, our days are just like a, a, a grass. And, and if you remember again, when, when, when Jesus Christ was talking about faith to, to, his, I mean, to people, he said, he, said, he said, consider the lilies of the valley. He said, today they shine. Even, even, even Solomon in all his glory was not as close as, as all these lilies. That's why the fact that today they glow and tomorrow they wither and they are cast into the, hole, into the, into the oven. So, so in other words, man's life is vanity. That's what Solomon said, vanity upon vanity is vanity. Everything we have in this life is vanity. So which means that we must be able to, to store up our treasure in heaven. We must be able, while we, are, we have this life, we must be able to make the best use of it so, so that we are going to walk towards eternity. He said, <clears throat> said that the grass withers and the flower fall away, but what does not fall away? The word of God, which endures forever. Now, this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. This is the word by which the gospel was preached to you. And this is the word that was preached to you, as we read in that verse, uh, 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 chapter 1, verses 23 to 24. It was quoting Isaiah. 
Isaiah 46 to 8. You see, notice Peter's emphasis on the word of God and his power. So if you've ever thought that preaching or Bible verses were weak, then you have to think again. Every sermon we listen to on Sunday carries power. If you really listen and give from it, it carries power. And every word of God that we read every day carries power. So when Christ is preached, it is like imperishable seed that begets new life in dead men and women. The word is powerful and very, very creative. So Apostle Peter now con then in the, the, he now start on that verse uh, one to three. He said Peter concludes this section with a renewed call to integrity. He is encouraged that genuine brotherly love is growing in them. He was very happy that they love each other, they love one another. Because of persecution of the of of, of um, the, the by the Jews by the Roman authority. They were forced to love one another. But that love is not enough because there was still rancor. There was still rancor within, 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 within brothers, within, within brethren. So now he encourages them to go all the way and let God's word complete its work in them. Therefore, rid yourselves of malice, of all malice, of all death, of all deceit, of hypocrisy, of all envy, of all slander, of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Peter commands his readers to rid themselves of a number of negative practices all of which have to do with evil thoughts or words. Read yourself. Get rid of it. You see, this brings us, you see, <clears throat> when, when you think about this, you say, dear friends, there are some churches today, unfortunately, that abound in malice, in deceit, in hypocrisy, in envy, in slander, and there's nothing that breaks a church than what Apostle Peter was saying here. When I was reading through what Apostle Peter wrote and I was meditating on, 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 on this, it just, my mind just came straight away to the, to the uh, golden sermon that we received last Sunday. And the man of God practicalized his, uh, his, uh, his message to us so, so, that, so that that message can sink in. What did he do? He, he brought water into a glass pure water into a glass and you could see it and then then he started i was thinking what kind of miracle is he going to perform this time around so he poured something like um a, um, um, a colored colored solution maybe fanta or, or coca-cola or something like that and then the, thing, the coloration started Coloration started, the colorations. So so that so that they, I said they wondering what, what was he talking about? What's he, what what is he trying to demonstrate? Then that pure water with the spirit of God in all is the fountain. According to him, is the fountain, is the spring of this the, the, the fountain of spring in us. Because if you remember again the encounter that Jesus Christ had with, with the Samaritan woman. He said, he said, the water, the water you are giving to me, I will tap, but the water I'm going to give to you, you will not thirst again. It is, it is a spring of water that will never make you thirst again. The woman said, give me that water to drink so that I will not have to come to this well again. And that spring of water is now in, inside every one of us. Every one of us that have been baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ, that spring of water is inside every one of us. But how many of us can say that spring of water is, 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 is the, the spring of water inside him or her is still pure, is still undiluted, is still unpolluted, is still uncorrupted? And what are the things that can corrupt it? That's what that's what the man the, the man of God was preaching yesterday. I mean, on, on that Sunday. 
are the things that can corrupt it are all the things that he mentioned here. Hypocrisy, envy, slander of every kind, idle gossiping. And the women that will police it, that's, that's nothing, only grace, but that grace too cannot even purify it because when, when, when he was demonstrating this, this, this uh, uh, analogy to us, he, he, he had to pour um, almost about four or five bottles of pure water into that single cup, into that single cup to, to be able to flush out all these negative evil thoughts. And so you so so now if you now apply it to our human life, once somebody has already polluted, corrupted his own or our own spring of water, it will take a, a, a lifetime of grace. Deliverance cannot help. Prayer cannot help. It takes in the, each individual to, to have to work hard for that grace to be able to remove all these negative thoughts which have already corrupted one's mind. So Peter commands his readers to rid themselves of a number of negative practices, all of which have to do with evil thoughts or words. And unfortunately, if we tolerate and enable this kind of behavior in God's house, we can come to bear guilt for these sins ourselves. Positively, Peter commands us to crave pure spiritual milk, to long for it, whereas evil desires belong to their own way of life, a hunger and a desire for God belongs to their new life. It is a new life in Christ that we must crave for. Peter is in saying that his readers are all spiritual babies. No. He said some of them have been Christians for 30 years or more. He is just using an analogy that all parents relate to instinctively. A newborn's hunger for mother's milk that seems almost insatiable. So in other words, whether we have been in the church for 50 years, or you have been in the church for five years, we must still be hungry for, for God's word. We must still be thirsty for God's word because every day we learn, every day we gain. So that, so that, so that <clears throat> even in 50 years of learning, you see how you, can, you cannot still say, I know everything. So that is what he's saying here. So he doesn't say that all of us are babies. He said we are to have that same kind of desire for God's word. Peter is saying God's written and preached word seems the immediate context. I encourage you to begin a lifelong habit of daily Bible reading to help satisfy in you a spiritual hunger resulting in your growing up in salvation. So the question I'm going to ask tonight, the first, the first question on this chapter, I mean verses one, two, three, is according to according to Apostle Peter, he made us to understand that this habit has been in existence even from the early church, and it's still in churches today. But how can we get rid of this negative habits in the church? How can we address it? How can we discourage it? Because I wouldn't say it, 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 is, it, it is normally a, it is a human behavior that is uh, inevitable. But, but being inevitable does not mean that it's not incorrectable. <clears throat> it can be corrected, can it? So, so how can we now get rid of this negative thought? Can it, can, can it re re uh, really be eradicated completely from the church? Envy, idle gossiping, jealousy, slander, and, and all this uh, rubbish talk. What, what breeds it? Because if you don't know the root cause of something, it will be difficult to cure it. So before we can cure it, or before we can eradicate it, we have to know what are the root causes. What can be the root causes of these kind of things? 
because it, 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 it's, it, it's, it's kind of a, a, a cancer for so many churches. Can somebody advise us what, what, can be, what can be the root causes of, of this thing? The, the people that engage in them, what, 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 what could be the spiritual problem they have? Can anybody help us? <sighs> okay. Now, Apostle, Apostle, Apostle Peter now realizing that this is <clears throat> a problem in the church. He, he, he encouraged them that the only way out is through the word of God. And how can you develop interest or how can you familiarize yourself with the word of God? He recommended so many things. One of them, one of them, the, the writer was saying is that make sure that every day be, be, so to, to develop yourself, read as much as possible, maybe one chapter from the New Testament, one chapter from the Old Testament, and one chapter from the book of Psalm. So if you try as much as possible to read these three chapters every day, you are not studying it, but you are reading it. And if it is not even if, if it is not possible, maybe once a day. And to make it even easy for you, there, there are some a Bible today, they call it 360, 360 Bible, which is a, a kind of a, a daily reading Bible. A daily reading Bible that, that is the a portion to you what you're going to read on, on, on every day of the 360 days of the, of the year. So it's a year-round, it's a year-round a, a Bible. And uh, I, I used to read it, I, I, I read it for almost about four years. I still have my copy with me. And now I don't, I don't have to go back again. I just have to just pick my Bible and read it because I study the Bible all the time. So it will really help us to read the Bible every every day when you wake up before you talk to anybody. If you have to go to work very early, wake up early in the morning. If you cannot read in the morning, take your Bible inside your car. When you get when you get your break time, read it. Just make sure that you read a chapter every day. And you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised how much you gain. But the problem we are asking tonight is how can we get rid of negative thoughts in the church? How can we get rid of, of the spirit of gossip? How can we get rid of spirit of slander? How can we get rid of spirit of jealousy, of envy in the church? What breeds it? Can anybody contribute to that for us? Ella Bank? Ella Bank? Okay, no problem. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. So, um, I mean, that's what I was saying. That's right. In, in other words, does the, does the church have any um, duty to play in developing anybody's um, uh, integrity, spiritual integrity, or, or it's it's uh, something that 
every every individual individual should work upon. Because when 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 the the preacher of last last Sunday was demonstrating for us, he he, he poured pure water inside a glass. He said that represents the spring of water in you. Then he started corrupting it by putting uh, uh, either Coca Cola or so it's just coloration. And that, that pure water, that pure pure water, they started getting blue or red or something like that. And and all this coloration represents all the negative thoughts that we are we we are uh, 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 you we we are deliberately uh, 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 corrupting ourselves of that spring water in us because every Christian has that spring pure water in himself. But now when you are engaging idle gossip, when you encourage idle gossip, when you encourage slander, when you encourage when, when, when you not grudge, you not malice, then 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 you corrupt that spring of water in yourself. And from the from 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 the from from the demonstration that he gave us, it took almost about four bottles of water before that water can change again to pure water. So if you now apply that four four bottles to that to to your own life, then it means that it, it's not easy. Once you corrupt that spring of water in you, it is not easy to bring it back to purity again. It takes a lifetime. Of struggle a lifetime so which means that it is it so that it, it, it's not everybody that is born again that is really born again but the question we are now asking uh, about threefold is how can we prevent our brethren from 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 uh, uh, um, uh, uh, from 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 engaging in this kind of negative thoughts envy slander I do gossip, jealous, anger, and all these things. And those people that engage in it, what are the root causes of it? Like, like uh, Dr. Osman has already said, he said because what, what could be responsible is because they are far from God by not reading the word of God. Which I agree with him, they are not reading the word of God. And I don't think church can be blamed for that one. Because the church is trying its best, but maybe somebody else can, can give us an idea. How do you think we can help those people? Yeah. Yes, Pastor Yeah, I can go on. Ah, okay. Uh, well, sorry when you called me at first. I didn't respond quickly, but I think um, I think a gossip. And all those things that you mentioned, um, some people have made it as part of their life. Mm -hmm. It's not good. Um, they're not following um, the teachings, or as the first speaker said, maybe um, acclimate yourself to the reading of the Bible or studying. Okay, and I think um, when someone is lack of studying, it's a problem. And um, some of these things that you mentioned also, that people gossip and stuff like that, some they may not realize it's gossip because uh, maybe they've been doing it over and over for some a period of time and don't even recognize it. So for me, what I would say is uh, we must continue to preach on it and um, just quote some of the scriptures from the Bible to them when you see these things going on. And we must continue to preach on it, talk about it, even even though it might hurt somebody or it might cause uh, something, but it's, it's the best is to, is to talk about it, to preach on it and let people realize this is, this is something, if you pass it, it is not good church, if you are wherever in the gossiping, and it won't help you, and it will not help the people around you. Rather, it causes problems. So, I think we might continue to preach 
and a preacher went in and tried to preach on it. And one day, somebody, and the person changed. We need, we, need, we, need, we need to study more about it. We need to get closer to reading the Bible so we can really um, know that uh, this gossip and um, drudge and all of that is not really, uh, it, it, it's not practical thing to do. That's my contribution. Thank you. Do we have any parallel between the, the demonstration the, the preacher gave to us on Sunday and what we are talking about tonight? To ask a question is envy, yes, sir. Carry on, sir. Yeah, just, just to um, go back to your question, you know, uh, I'm not sure whether the church can actually you know, prevent people, but I just want us to go back to, to, to you know, chapter two, that's right, you know, verse chapter two, verse to the one, and it's and not again by saying, therefore, and I think you, when you started, you actually went, you know, to explain to us where the therefore started from, yeah. That's right. That's Again, of not of um, not of, of it's not of the corruptible 
seeds of incorruptible seeds, all right, because the word of God is not corrupt. So it's really our seed on the word of God, all right? And you endure the word of God, then the things that we've mentioned, talking about advising, talking about all those things, you know, we will not really be talking about it. But what this tells us, you know, because if you cannot lay in chapter 2 again, but in, in chapter 2 of verse 1, if we cannot lay aside all the malice, the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy, the envy, and all people speaking as new babes, new babes, then we have a challenge. That's right. All right? So it goes back to, to, to the application or the recommendation you are making. Spend time in the Word of God. Not a word, not, you don't need to spend a half an hour in the Word of God. Even just a couple of bucks a day goes a long way. And that's how you see the spirit man in you, because the Word of God is spirit, it talks to the spirit, it relates to the spirit man in you. If you don't feed the spirit man, you just feed in the flesh, then nothing happens, you know. So again, going back from verse 22, when it says, therefore, for those who endure the Word, yes, they'll be, they be able to do those things. But if you cannot lay those things aside, then you are not really a true Christian. You just come into church. That's true. You see? And that is what is in the end of chapter 2, verse 1, is talking about that. That's why for people started, you know, and by making that reference there, yeah, then you're just a new one. You're still drinking milk in the church. That's so right. can you can you make that transition from, from, from being a, a day to enjoying the word of God and, and then showing its fruits of love? Kindness, long suffering. Yes, yeah, you can. Yeah. But you've got to make that effort. You know, you know, just like Jesus said to, 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 to Peter, Peter, feed my what? Feed my sheep, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, some parts of the topic that are thinking, they are blocked to the grass, literally the grass. Okay? Mm, that's right. Because they block up the sheep eating grass. But what people were saying, can you, what Jesus can you, can you teach the gospel? Because when we look at the same for, for this chapter, it's really talking about teachers actually as well, you know. So when we are teaching, you know, God's people, go to teach them, you know, uh, really the, the, the gospel, because that's what it says there. You've got to teach the gospel to, to the people, the gospel message to the people. But again, if individual, it's again it's an individual thing, you have now to go away and take the word of God, meditate over it, do your own research, do your own, you know, study privately and develop your own spirit man inside of you. But if you're not doing that, you're just coming to church and you listen and you go home, then it's going to be a challenge. That is true. You know, if the church is not providing the platform for that, then yes, then the church is responsible. That but is we true. have Bible study, we have a prayer meeting, we have Sunday service, we have, I believe that the Word of God is being taught. You know, if all those ingredients are in place, then, you know, the provision is made for the sheep to come and eat. That's right. Yeah, but you cannot force the ship to be. So, and that's my own contribution. So I don't think we can be it. We only do that through the power of the Holy Spirit to touch the lives of people, you know, that they will come to that realization and begin to spend time in the Word of God so that, you know, they can change whatever weakness is in their life. Thank you so much. Because that reminds me of uh, what uh, we read in the, in, the, in the book of Jeremiah that I have appointed you as a watchman over the house of Israel. He said, if, 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 if uh, some people sin and you, 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 you fail to tell them and they stumble, I will hold you responsible. But if you tell them and they heed not, then you have already saved your soul. So, 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 so that buttress exactly what you are saying. Because as a pastor, I've observed that people who feed on God's word as a life habit are the ones who grow as disciples and grow in holiness. And those who wait to be spoon-fed on Sunday morning carry the earmarks of spiritual adolescents who never really grow up in their salvation. Like you rightly said, some people may be in the church for 30 years. They are just bench warmer Christians. They come every Sunday. And yet they go home gaining nothing. So and, and, and when Apostle Peter was writing this epistle, he was about between ages of 50 to 60 years of age. And he has been in business of fishing for men and then disciplining them for the past 30 years. So he knows all about battling conformity to the world's values, the necessity of pushing into a whole life 
and the importance of maintaining a healthy hunger for and a healthy intake of God's word. Peter calls you to press into maturity as a Christian disciple. And this is what we are saying tonight. How are we ready to step into that plate? So now, he now went further into chapter 4. You see that chapter 4 now says that <coughs> The coming, the, that is the, the chosen stone and his chosen people. Verse 4 says, Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. But when you now read in the, in the New Living Bible, he said, You are coming to Christ. He said, you are coming to Christ, and Christ who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. Verse 5, and you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What's more, you are the holy priests. Though, I mean, through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God, as the scripture says, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honor, and anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. If you remember too, when, when our general overseer was preaching the other day, he tried to explain to us what is meant by cornerstone, what is meant by capstone, why Jesus Christ is so important, because what, what is the importance of cornerstone? In a building, and what is the importance of capstone in a building? So, so that so that we we are, we are back again to what Apostle Peter is saying here, describing Jesus Christ as as the cornerstone of God's temple. So, what is he talking about? You see, Apostle Peter explain is explaining to his readers just how special they are to God. Up to this time, the Israelites were God's chosen people. But now, those who put their trust in the Messiah are the chosen ones. If you remember again, out of, out, out of all the races of the world, the, 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 the Israelis, that is the children, the 12 types of Israel, are the chosen race of God, the, they are the chosen people of God, up till the time that the Messiah came. And then, after the crucifixion, those people now that now believe in Jesus Christ, that recognize Jesus Christ as the Messiah, now became the chosen people, not all the Jews anymore. So we are going to explore what this means by examining several analogies that Peter gives to us. Because otherwise we will still be thinking that those people that crucified Jesus Christ, are they still chosen people of God? So, Apostle, Paul, Apostle Peter now said, he said, God as the mighty rock. God as the mighty rock. Two, a spiritual temple made up of living stones. Three, a holy priesthood. And four, a chosen people. So, he brought out four points here. He, took, he, he recognized God as the mighty rock. And then a spiritual temple made up of living stones. And then a holy priesthood. And then a chosen people. What are living stones? Living stones in a spiritual temple. You see, many Old Testament passages talk about God as a mighty rock and fortress. As, as and the Peter whose son name means rock calls his readers to this concept of God. As you come to him, the living stone, as you come to a king, that is the living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. House of God is often used in the Bible as the, temp as the, as the tabernacle and later the temple. 
I, I want you to notice how the living stone here refers to Jesus Christ the Messiah. We also, like living stones, are built into a spiritual temple. This theme of Christians being collectively the temple of God built upon Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone, is found elsewhere in the New Testament. Built into. So, 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 so we are, we, we, we are built into Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ spoke the same word to Peter when he said, I will build my church. I will build my church on you. So notice how Peter described the living stone. He said, rejected by men. If we follow people's opinion, we are likely to reject a lot of blessings God has for us. If we follow people's opinion. Number two, chosen by God that is handpicked, that is that's God handpicked Jesus Christ. And then precious to him of great value to God. A holy priesthood. Now, the analogy moves from a holy temple to a holy priesthood. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so in other words, all of us, from the inception, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are built into a priesthood of Jesus, of, of, of God. And then what happened now? You see, though it was God's initial desire that all his chosen people, the Jews, might be priests, as we read in Exodus 19, 5 to 6. But their fear of God was not met with faith. So they asked God not to speak to them directly, as we read also in Exodus 20, 19, but through Moses. So apparently, as a result, an order of priesthood was set up, starting with Aaron, Moses' brother, his sons, and their descendants. So, so we can now see that, that, that it was not God's original intention to set up Aaron as a priest and, and his generations to come. He will come all of them. Because otherwise, I mean, <clears throat> if, if you still remember, when, when we go back to creation again, Abel offered sacrifices to God. He be altar for God. Cain also came, became jealous. Isaac, uh, Isaac also be altar for God. Abraham be altar for God. They, they are not Levi. They are not priests. But they were. But every, but every, 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 every zealot Jew. You know, could do that not until the time that they said, No, we don't want to do that. Don't speak to us anymore. We don't we don't have the faith to be able to faith you. Speak to us through Moses. So that was when the order of the priesthood came into it. And we've also also read about the order of the Messiah, which is Jesus Christ, was a king and also a high priest. So the priests acted as mediators between the people and the Holy God assisting with the sacrifices and presenting them before the Lord. So it was a high and holy calling. But in the New Testament, God chooses another thing now, because in the, in the, in the New Testament, <clears throat> God chooses new people, a people of faith, and once more calls us all to be priests. Priesthood is not restricted in the New Testament to the Levite anymore. So, which appears here and in verse, in verse 9, is, 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 is a, a royal priesthood means a priesthood of royal rank or in royal service and refers to Exodus again, 19.6. To understand how we Christians are to function as priests, let us examine each of the key words in the later part of verse 5, offering sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Acceptable to God. Acceptable is the Greek word. Acceptable, pleasant, welcome. How can we make sacrifices offer acceptable to God? Our sacrifices are acceptable only when offered through Jesus Christ, our living high priest, spiritual. 
So we worship God through the Spirit. As Jesus said, we would, as we read in John 4, 20, 23 to 24. And we deliberately and consciously offer up to God our worship, sacrifices. So what are the sacrifices in the New Testament? Our praise and worship is a form of sacrifice. Our vows is a form of sacrifice. Our, 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 our devotion, our talents is a form of sacrifice. Our offering is a form of sacrifice. Our tithes is a form of sacrifice. And those are the things that, that we have to, to, to think about. Because in the Old Testament, the priests offered cattle, sheep, goats, birds, grain, incense. But in the New Testament, the offering are spiritual from the heart. Historically, these verses describing all Christians as priests made a great impact under Martin Luther, who sought reform in the Roman Catholic Church. Rather than a select order of priests in the church, he came to see a vision of all peoples being able to relate to God directly through the medium of Holy Spirit. As we read in 1 Corinthians 2, 8-16, the priesthood of believers. So, so the question we are now asking ourselves tonight is, Christians often look at their relation to God as consumers delighting in what God does for them. But what is the mindset of a priest towards God? What actions does this mindset inspire in us? We see ourselves as consumers. Christians today are consumers delighting in what God does for them. But we now project ourselves to the position of a priest towards God. What is our mindset of a priest towards God? What action does this mindset inspire in us? Can somebody give us that uh, explanation? How can we repay back what, what God is doing for us and stop being consumers, consumers? Because when we are consumers, we are also always expecting what God is going to do for us. Even in our prayer every day, God, we want this, God, we want that, God, we do this, we want we, we pray, 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 we want this, we want that. So we are consumers. But when we now position ourselves into uh, to, 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 to be a priest for God, what is our mindset as a priest to God? How can we repay God back? In what forms? Not in goods, not in grains. Can somebody help us? By worship and obedience. By worship and obedience. Astra. So in other words, what we are saying is that worship is very, very important in the life of the ministry. So that, so that, so that what is a spiritual worship then? You see, just what kinds of offering do we offer to God? Here is an enlightening, though incomplete list. Obedience, like uh, the senior pastor has said, obedience. When we obey God in the way we live, we worship God. Offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And this is your spiritual act of worship. As we read in Romans 12, 1, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God which is your spiritual act of worship. And then Jesus made it clear that he desires not just outward obedience, but obedience from the heart, as we read in Matthew 6, 1-5. The psalmist captures this idea so well. He said, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my deliverer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. And that meditation must be pure thoughts. Must be free of envy. Must be free of jealousy. Must be free of slander. 
must be free of all negative thoughts. Because after 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 we finish saying the grace, we say, let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable. Do we really understand what we are talking about? And that is what the author is now bringing tonight to us that we are we, we are repeating it every 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 time that we pray but do we really understand it do we stand by what we repeat every day so so it's very very important what what the peter is writing here then the second point is financial gifts our sacrifice is financial gifts i have received from epaprodidos the gifts you sent if you remember he gave this apostle paul Writing, writing, he said, I have received from uh, Epaphroditus, that is one, 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 one of the, one, one of, one of the uh, early slaves that was sent. He said, the, the gifts that you sent, they are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. As we read in Philippians 4.18, see also chapter 2 verse 17, which refers to Philippians offering offering and do not forget to do good and to share with others for which such sacrifices god is pleased as we read in hebrew 13 16. so your financial gift is very very important and this is where it brings us to understanding exactly what the, the, the senior pastor used to say that that he believed in sowing seed And many, many times without even asking us, he so seed on behalf of the of Manzana Fellowship Church in other churches. Sometimes I used to wonder what, what, what is the what is the purpose of it? And some people are still asking, but can can you explain to us why do we need to sow souls in other people's churches, Pastor Mana? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I have to ask. That's right. Now, there's another question <clears throat> that um, is be bugging my mind. Or what, 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 that is um, when, when, when we when the main ministry had um, our Thanksgiving uh, workshop about two or, two or three years ago, and we were doing something on on finance and this and that, and the demand was saying that. Uh, uh, the people that gives money out every month and this and that 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 not that they are foolish but not that they are uh, spend drift but but they cannot be rich that the only way that the only way you can be rich that the only way that you can have financial independence is to stop giving money out especially to these hungry people in africa because the more you give the more they demand and the more you give out, the more the lesser you broke. What 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 is your opinion about it? Because one thing is, um, <clears throat> I'm a giver, so I don't have money. I'm always broke because I give out. Does it make me a foolish man? So 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 how, how do you, how do you not build your financial empire? Because one thing is, he said the, the millionaires. They, they, if they say the millionaires give out their money, they will not become millionaires. I'm listening, sir.
you know, we, we have to be very careful about. That's right. I think it's not even critical. I think it was about Einstein who said this, that you don't want to feel well for yourself, but you want to be bad and create value for others. You know, I think mean, Robert Einstein said that. Yeah. Good. But one of the things that I always have to bear in mind is that you don't want to be a reservoir. Okay. Mm-hmm. You want to be a, 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 a river that flows. Right. You want to be used as a vessel to be a blessing to other people. Okay. Okay. So by doing that, you, and it doesn't. And again, let's be careful. It's not about the amount of money. It's the principle yeah. Yeah. that comes here. Okay. It's the principle. So you want to be a river. You want to be a vessel that God is using to be a blessing to other people. Maybe ten dollars. Maybe twenty dollars. Maybe thirty dollars. Yeah. All right, but you are you are being of value to somebody. All right, rather than somebody, because that quote that was made earlier, I think it's a selfish quote. You know, it's so it's so internalized that you know I, I would not subscribe to it. I just don't want to say I'll be broke because I'm giving. No, I will not be broke because I'm giving. Obviously, you give wisely. You know, so again, some of these quotes we really have to pay attention to what people are saying. Mm. You know, and be very careful. I would also interpret it because somebody may interpret it and say, "Oh, because I'm giving, that's why I don't have." That's right. That is, if you don't, if you'll never have. You know, I mean, people would use the example of the closed fist. You know, you'll never receive the, you know, your fist is closed. But be a vessel. Pray to God to be a vessel, to be a blessing and a and a value to other people. Amen. And 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 the thing about financial wealth, the thing about blessing, is not so much financial wealth, also the peace of mind that you. Mm. You know, once you have peace of mind about what you're doing, that in itself is a blessing. You may have all the money and everything in the world, but you're depressed. That's right. Okay? And if, if you're going through depression, you're going through, you know, all the, you know, um, stuff. But just if you're happy, that's a blessing. That's right. I know people don't have, but they're always giving, they're always giving, and they keep joyfully. That's right. Yeah. So it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be a large amount of money. Whatever you have, and you know, you say, I've got $200, I can afford to give somebody $50 or $30 or whatever it is. Hmm. It can be a blessing to that. That's yeah. fine. So, so, so that, that concept is true. The more you scatter, the more you gather. If you don't scatter, you cannot gather. If you don't, if you don't sow, you cannot reap. On, on a good soil. On a good soil, of course. <laughs> on a good soil. <laughs> that's, not, that's another thing. On a good soil. So we sow, we, we sow wisely then. Yeah, then number three is proclaiming the gospel. As a God, Paul talks about this, is called to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles with the priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God so that the Gentiles might become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. As we read in Romans 15, 16. And then the last one is praise. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruits of lips that confess his name, as we read in Hebrews 13, 15. And this last verse paraphrase an Old Testament passage that says, Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So we will render the curse of our lips. As we read in Isaiah 14, 2. Now, the Old Testament priests offered liberal offerings. We New Testament priests offer praise as our sacrifice. However, the theme of the spiritual core of sacrifice is alive and well in the Old Testament. Here are a few examples. He said, those who bring thanksgiving as their sacrifice honor me. To those who go the right way, I will show the salvation of God. As we read in Psalm 50, 23, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. So this will please the Lord more than an ox, more than a bull with a horn and hooves. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, as we read in Hebrew, and pay your vows to the Most High. So the question now is your praise if your praise is primarily for God's benefit, not your own, how should you be offering praise? 
If your praise is primarily for God's benefit, not your own, how should you be offering praise? And we thank God for, for our children. We thank God for our praise and worship song uh, team. We saw the way they perform, and we thank God because they, they, they invite the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moves when they, when they are singing. We thank God for their life. So, uh, our next teacher next week is, is, is starting from uh, verse 6, from verse 6, which is going to bring us to another, another, another very, very important situation. I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Maybe Pastor Mana is the one that is going to teach us. Praise God. Any question? <laughs> we can't go tonight. Any question? Any question? Okay, so let, let our, our general Basia prepare himself for, 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 for taking us to the next level, next, next, next Wednesday. Okay, sir, can you please close us in, open us closing prayer? Thank you. generously guide it so as not to lose out. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm. So that's the usual thing that we have. That's right. Praise God. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so sir. much, um, Pastor Lambo, Thank for you, um, you know, facilitating tonight, teaching us tonight. Thank truly you. appreciate it. And to all the contributors and all on, on, the, on, on the Bible study, I pray that the Holy Spirit will minister Amen. to each and every one of us. Amen. You know, just as bring the pure milk, which is not, you know, um, Diluted, because that's what Paul was talking about. We don't drink diluted milk, you know, but we drink the pure milk, and we continue to drink the pure milk in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come before your throne of grace tonight. We thank you for your word, my God. We thank you, Father, for what uh, Apostle Peter uh, directing us as teachers of the word of God in the book of, of Peter, chapter 2. As far as we will teach this word of God on that you said in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for that grace, O God, you over the Holy Spirit who gives us insights into the world, O God. They give us illumination into your word, interpretation of your, or not our interpretation, but your interpretation in the mighty name of Christ. And Father, as we teach this word, may you give us clarity, O God, so that the saints of God and those on the line, Father, O God, will your word and that the word will be start to the spirit man in them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of God. I pray and I love my God that we will keep our purpose. You know, we we'll lay aside all masks, all God, all spoken and envy and evil speaking of God who will keep them up in the mighty name just according to your word. First we thank you the first word. We thank you, Father of God. Give you all the praise, we give you all the the glory, Father. May we continue to desire the fair milk of God as verse 2 says. May we continue to desire the milk of your word. No one that has been what has been poured into, Father, but the pure, fair word that it will nourish us, nourish our spirit in the mighty name of Jesus 
Father, we thank you for tonight. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. I pray, my Lord and my God, that you ignite our prayer life. You ignite our study life in the mighty name of Jesus. That spend time in your word, Lord, and the Holy Spirit will minister to each and every one of us. Father, we thank you for your church command, by your Christian church. We thank you for what you're doing in the church. We thank you for your, for your move. We thank you for your servant who ministered last Sunday, for the word you gave him for the church. We thank you for all the testimonies that came through last week's Sunday. We give you praise and we give you all the glory. And we come tonight in the heart of gratitude as we depart. We do not depart from the sight of God. We pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to minister this teaching to us throughout the week until we meet again next week Wednesday. Commit everything into your heart. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Can we, all, can we all share the grace together? May the grace, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the Spirit for the Holy Spirit rest in and abide with us all. Now for us all. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall join the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good night.